we are out here in KwaZulu-Natal in sort of the um, upper highway region uh, amongst this long winter grass. I'm currently with Gus with his new bag looking pretty sharp. Um, we're going to see if we can't get after some grasses in this chaotic long grass which is going to be a bit of a mission. Um, we should bump into loads of other common snakes, hopefully some yellow-throated plated lizards and Odin is joining us a little bit later when he wakes up um, but we're gonna get after it and see what we can turn up so trying to find the rocks is a little bit difficult in all the grass and but whoops but this is essentially what these plated lizards are like this long grass I think I saw something go under this hole nope it's just ant boys I think See if we have the first snake of the day. Well, yeah, here we have the first snake of the day. It's just a little sluggy to that gust just flipped. Just under a rock. Yeah, right on the side of the path. But we see a lot of slug eaters, well, down in the Cape anyway. Not so many here, but I'm not gonna focus on this guy too long, get a few vouchers and then see what else we can turn up. Hopefully get some targets, not just collateral along the way. I just flipped the second snake of the day. This is Aphrotyphlops bibrinae. It's the bibrin spine snake. Um, I see quite a lot of them in this sort of area, in this sort of grassland. Ridiculous animals to try and sort of video or photograph, um, just because they never stop sort of wriggling and moving. Um, this is quite a small one. They can get sort of around 40, 50 centimeters. Um, you can see that his tongue is coming out. He looks just like a sort of legless lizard for the most part. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, gonna just grab a quick INAT record shot and we're gonna carry on. I'm gonna see if I can't catch up with Gus and Odin. I think they're somewhere way down there. But yeah, not a not a bad not a bad start just to add another species to the list. Well, it seems like I'm in a, a good place. He has a, a bunch of hatched eggs. I'll have a look. One, two, three, four. Just a couple of um, hatched eggs. These probably look like quite large. Maybe wolf snake eggs, or, or maybe actually. I don't actually know. Okay. Small clutch. It's, it's actually, it might be even um, one of the lizards species out here but that's pretty cool you can see they've all hatched this is probably from last season already so he's definitely in a good spot so how's this for a flip i just flipped this rock and there's one two three maybe three or four um thread snakes these look like the forest thread snakes let me grab a couple before they all scoot away come on brother come out here um Where's this other one gone? So yeah, these are most likely the forest thread snakes. Um, with these leptotyphlops, um, the genus, they're incredibly difficult to sort of identify. But these guys look pretty um, thick body compared to some of the other really slender ones. But I'm going to have to have a good look at some of the tail ends and see if I can't get some diagnostic features. But for the most part, these are thread snakes part of the lepto typlop genus. Um, so I'm not gonna try ID them just yet. Uh, hopefully once I put the video together, I might be able to have a decent identification on them, but there's no guarantee. You can see they've got these really small, um, shiny, highly glossy scales with the sort of terminal spine on the tail. And they pretty much just feed on ant eggs and and lava, so quite an interesting species. Uh, there goes the other one, but I'm just going to grab him just so I can log a couple for um, INAT. So we've got into a good section now. Um, just got the blind sink right down there, but a good section where some of these plated lizards are, which I'm hoping we can find because that's the main sort of target for today. Oh. Can never flip rocks and draw record. Oh, there you go. Hold on. What do we got here? Yeah, it's just a common wolf snake or a, a cape wolf snake. They 
what's we call them? These are quite cool guys. They, they're a very relaxed species. They tend not to bite and strike. Um, but you can see what they typically do is like he's doing now. They flatten their body way out. You can see by his tail here um, and the whole of his body. And they just wriggle around in these like short jerk, jerky movements, typically trying to um, imitate the stiletto snake. But let me pick him up and I'll give you a quick look. Yeah, these guys are totally harmless. So you've got that nice sort of white edging on the scales. A really sort of um, feeble, come on brother, just relax. Um, a really sort of flat pointed head. Um, yeah, this is quite nice. I haven't seen one of these for a couple of months since I've sort of been out of this area. So nice welcome, welcome surprise. We're gonna keep on moving. See how he's flattening those uh, ventrals like that. Very typical of the wolf snake, which is closely resembles the, the venomous stiletto snake, which I'm sure most of you guys know about. And t definitely not something you wanna confuse and pick up because you will definitely learn the hard way when your fingers start to disintegrate. But cool, I'm gonna see if I can't find Gus and Odin. Um, I'm gonna see what hopefully they've turned up. It's just uh, another Afro Typhlops. It's the uh, Bourbon's blind. You can see that's obviously his hole that he's looking for. Um, and there he goes. Cool. So this is our main target for today. Um, but Gus, I don't know why he needs his hook stick for a lizard. But um, yeah, Gus flipped this just under the rock there. There's the lizard. And there's Gus here with the working finger. Oh, where? Yeah. Um, but you can see this is quite... A small one, well, I mean, they get a lot bigger than this, but this one at least has an original tail, which is pretty much the thing you want when a lizard is like 70% tail. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, yeah, yellow throat is a plated lizard. This is a female, so you can see they don't have that nice orange, as orange throat as the common name suggests. But yeah, it's a good spot, so hopefully, we can turn up a male or a couple more and see what the other ones look like. Yeah, we're all happy. Odin's lifer, but Odin's already looking for something else. I think this is quite a nice area for him and his selfies, so we're going to see what we're going to get after. Just to actually give you an idea of the habitat, we're in a tiny little nature reserve just nestled between some houses. But I'm, I'm going to try not to give too much away because after the last couple of my videos, I've seen people have been visiting my spots and literally finding the same animals that I've found. So. Hopefully they stay that way because if people are collecting the animals, it's pretty much defeats the object of making videos. But yeah, we got some photos and gonna just chuck this guy back under his rock now. Got a, another snake of the day. This is a tiny little wolf snake that Odin just flipped under that rock there. Um, you can see it's much, much smaller than that other one we got. But it's quite cool. I mean, Gus was saying he's never seen wolf snakes here. Now this is the second one we've got for the day. Um, that's pretty cool. We're going to grab a quick voucher just to log it and we're going to carry on. I think we're going to maybe hit that hillside or hit some of the forest just to see what else we can turn up. <laughs> so Odin just, uh, or Odin or the king of destruction, just turned up this um, really dark looking olive snake. Um, you would have seen if you'll calm down to a mild panic. Come on, brethren. Ah, oh, okay, now he's a bit angry. But um, you would have seen the ones that I've been finding in the Western Cape, all that like olivey green, yellow color. Um, the ones down here are super dark. You can see his ventrals are sort of pitch black. Um, this is just a small one, but he's absolutely spazzing out. So I'm not gonna worry about him too much, but I'll see if I can give you a little look on the floor. Um, there he goes, he's just spazzing out a bit, but it's all right. Um, we just grab a quick voucher and we're gonna carry on. Stop, why are you doing this? So here's another really common species for our list today. Uh, it's a black-headed centipede eater. Um, some of the sort of American guys and herpes out there you might recognize him. They look very similar to the sort of Tantilla genus that you guys get there, sort of with that distinctive black head, um, sort of brownie sort of belly. 
relatively small species. Um, they, they do get quite a bit bigger than this, but this is about average. Um, he is really small. But these guys feed exclusively on, on centipedes. They are venomous, so you don't really want them to bite you like he was trying to do there. But they typically just sort of push their, their heads into your hands. Um, although I have seen records of guys where they've actually bagged these snakes up um, whilst herping with other species and they have sort of bitten the other species of snakes and have actually killed them. So venom is something to sort of be avoided, but they're really nothing, nothing to worry about just holding in hand like this. But yeah, we're going to grab a quick voucher, just let him go. So we just got to a different spot. We got two more tiny little thread snakes just under sort of the first rock we got here. Um, as you can see, it's quite a nice rocky sort of hillside. There's Gus and Odin, some moron on a motorbike who's coming to annoy us. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, hopefully we can see more. These look like a different species to the other ones that we've just got um, at the other spot. These are probably just the Peter's thread snake as opposed to the forest thread snake that I think we got at the other spot. So check these guys back and carry on. And uh, yet another centipede eater down at our second spot. Um, apparently, well, at least what Gus says that there's quite a lot of them. What have you got there? So I've still got the centipede eater. Gus has got a little thread snake, if you can see. Oh, yes. But um, yeah, I think let's chuck the... Yo, Odin just got something up there. What have you got? I didn't just flip the decent size short snouted grass snake. Grab it with the other hand so we can at least see it. <laughs> I'm keen on that. I was a bit scared. Yeah, take the snake and I will operate this thing quickly. Yeah, that's why you gotta watch out for these guys. They're a little bit bitey. I didn't think Odin was scared, but he's a bit scared. Yeah, this is a short snouted um, grass snake. They're super bitey. They're super bitey, so we're going to just try to get him to relax a little bit. Yeah, they've got quite large maxillary teeth that sort of get right into you. So you can see he's got a quite a nice um, broken dotted uh, line down the back. But they, they do calm down a little bit. But yeah, that was a quick flip. You can see he's missing a little bit of his tail. But yeah, we're going to... Get this guy to sit and calm down a little bit and then I'll give you guys a better look at it. See, it's just uh, once this thing has calmed down, once I've gently just got it here to give you guys a better look at it. But I was just trying to calm it down and I didn't flip something else. <laughs> just put it in your hands so we can see it so wriggly. Um, just another centipede eater. Bring that one in there, guys. You can see we got two centipede eaters here. Um, like I said earlier, they look very similar to the American Tantillas. But yeah, the guys feed just on centipedes. We're probably going to see loads of them, so we're not going to fuss around with them too much. Uh, we're going to keep going. Let's just a look at the short snouted grass snake once it's calmed down a little bit. Um, the sun is just really awful. I'm trying to just shoot in the say, shade here. You can see he's got a bit of a truncated um, tail there. But yeah, once these guys calm down, like most of the, the grass snakes, they go, they relax pretty well. Um, just a case of getting them to relax enough so you can get photographs. Oh, there we go. Well, Anapanapsis is just another um, young wolf snake. It's actually the first flip clip that I've got in a while that I was actually started off. But yeah, we got a couple of these at the other site. Um, but I always enjoy seeing them, so. Cool. Another wolf snake. Yeah, just a little wolf snake. So you see, I'll put them on a rock quickly. You'll see they do this little jittery sort of motion. They do this jerk if you touch them and they freak out. Much like the um, stiletto snakes, which many people confuse him with, like our good friend Odin, who got bitten by one. But yeah, these guys are totally harmless. Um, but cool, going to grab a quick record and we're going to carry on. So I hadn't even let this wolf snake go and Gus just flipped this monster 
of a forest thread snake. It's a little focus. You can see this guy's huge compared to uh, some of the other species that we've been specimens that we've been getting. But yeah, I want to grab a quick cell phone pic of each of these guys, and then I'm just gonna chuck them back. Just since this area's got quite a high density of lizards and, and small other snakes, we're gonna try to run a, a couple of clips here and just see if we can't get some flip clips happening. Yeah, these little um, snake eyed skinks that we see a lot of generally as you flip the rock they just disappear so let's see if we can't get a couple of those in action. Oh, Grace a big scorpion. Nothing. This always happens though as soon as you get the flip clips trying to happen you just end up getting a whole lot of nothing. So I'm going to have to put a stop to these sort of clips of this because you guys are going to get way tired of it, but pretty awesome. Here's an, another big clump of these thread snakes. And you can see they're actually living right alongside these um, large termites, which presumably they're, um, you know, feeding on the, the lava of. So quite interesting you actually see them in the, in the burrows of the termites. So it's quite cool seeing them close together like this but yeah we've probably seen a 15 or 20 of these uh, snakes today so here's something we've also been looking for today this is a mozambique dwarf burrowing skink scolotes mozambicus see if the light's a little bit better whoa don't wriggle your tail off these guys have a tendency to just drop their tail super easy you can see it's a beautiful sort of electric blue on the base there they got tiny little eyes just in the front of the head there. But yeah, these guys are really interesting. Um, you would have seen some of my other videos, some of the ones down in the Cape. These are restricted to KwaZulu Natal for the most part. Um, but yeah, really cool. We're going to try get some better footage of him and some stills, and then we're going to carry on and see what else we're going to turn up here. It's actually quite a nice hillside here, just on, on the. What have you got? Oh, he's got a skink. Uh, we actually are right on the behind a graveyard, so a little bit sketchy. But yeah, let's have a look at what Gus. It's just a little variegated skink that Gus got just while I had the scolotes in hand. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty common. Usually, as you sort of flip the rocks, they disappear. So we're not going to worry too much, and they're pretty common. But away, let's get going. Gus just flipped a little southern brown egg eater. Looks like quite a, a chunky one for such a little specimen. Um, he just flipped it under one of the little rocks down there again, right by this beautiful graveyard. <laughs> um, so we'll have a look at it in a few seconds once Gus is finished with his pictures. Yeah, you guys wouldn't have seen these on the videos before, but they're really cool. Um, these guys get pretty big. They get to just over a meter, so large enough to eat sort of a... a big size or a extra large size chicken egg um pretty rad um we don't see any of these in the western cape we only see the rhombic so always nice to see the the southern brown boys again yeah just gonna release the southern brown eater quick got our vouchers go under your rock brother So I think it's going to have to be the last centipede eater video. Well, the last flip clip. Because how many have you got here? Under one rock. Oh my gosh. Five. There's literally five. Um, this is ridiculous. These snakes are just, yeah, they're just ridiculous. Um, so <laughs> we're not going to worry about these guys too much. Well, this one's quite big actually. Yeah, so we might actually photograph him. But these little small guys can just get back under their rock. Yeah, you want to chuck in? Chuck them all under that rock and they can do their thing. Just another little southern brown egg eater. This is the third or fourth one for the day. It's gonna be super cold. Just another little thread snake. We've been seeing loads and loads of these guys today. But I'm not going to worry about this guy. I'm just going to put his rock back 
because I'm not up for the challenge of trying to get photographs of these guys today. So we just added this burn field. I just flipped this rock, but I'm going to show you what's under it. That's a little rhombic night header. These guys are venomous. Um, a bite's really going to ruin your day. Shot for my shade man Gus over there. So we got to sort of pick this guy up with a little stick or something because I'm not looking to spend the next couple of days in pain and agony. Um, these guys are sort of frog and toad. Um, he got his head out a bit. These guys are sort of frog and toad specialists. You can see they've got that distinctive um, V-shaped marking behind the neck. Um, this guy's actually pretty skinny um, for an eye They're usually quite thick set. But yeah, it's quite a nice find. I haven't seen one in a couple of months. So first time at this spot seeing one. And first time I've seen an eye in a couple of weeks, like I said. So we're going to grab some quick photos of this guy and we're just going to gently put his rock back down. Then. We just got a, a triple flip. Odin's got a, another thread snake, yet another centipede eater. You can just chuck those two back into the rock. Um, and the third thing, which we didn't really see at first, is a really young Scalotes Mozambicus. Um, let's see if it all does is. I think he's missing a portion of his tail, or a large section of his tail, but always, always nice to see these guys. And Odin is just a centipede eater king. He just flipped yeah. another one, as we're still talking about these here. <laughs> yeah, we've probably got over at least 40 or 50 snakes today. Um, let's have a look. You can see these, this little Scalotes looking a little bit sad without his tail, but we'll get some pictures anyway. We gotta get the boys to flip this. I don't know why Gus is flipping it like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa don't, don't squash that guy. Hold on, it's a nice huge centipede eater. Okay, guys, and drop it down. That's a big one. That's gonna be the biggest. Dude, it's a dent in one centipede eaters <laughs> it's got a big we've seen apparently this guy's got a dent in it oh yeah he's got a bit of a old scar on there whoa this guy's trying to bite something a bit different from the common snakes just a variable skink uh, these guys are quite attractive actually i mean we see a lot of them we don't really pay much attention to them but yeah it's pretty cool we're actually gonna maybe start heading out back down the slopes to just photograph one or two things and then I think we're gonna call it.